In this video, we are going to walk you through the workflow for high molecular weight DNA extraction from cells using the Monarch High Molecular Weight DNA Extraction Kit for cells and blood. The protocol is broken into two parts, cell lysis and DNA binding and elution. In the Monarch workflow, the cell membranes are first lysed to enable the RNA in the cytoplasm to be digested by RNase A. The nuclei containing the genomic DNA remain intact. If the nuclei were also lysed in this first step, the lysate would become very viscous from the genomic DNA, and this would prevent efficient RNA removal by the RNase A enzyme. After pelleting the cells, prepare the nuclei prep solution by mixing the nuclei prep buffer with the RNase A, and prepare the nuclei lysis solution by mixing the nuclei lysis buffer with the proteinase K. Flick the tube to resuspend the cell pellet and add 150 microliters of the nuclei prep solution. Pipette up and down 10 times to mix, being careful not to introduce air bubbles. The sample will become less turbid, indicating that the cells are lysing, but the nuclei will remain intact. Then incubate at room temperature for two minutes. This nuclei prep process helps reduce the viscosity of the lysate so that the RNase A treatment can be effective. Next, add 150 microliters of nuclei lysis solution and invert 10 times to mix. Avoid introducing air bubbles and do not vortex or pipette. In this step, the nuclei are lysed, releasing the genomic DNA. Incubate at 56 degrees for 10 minutes in a thermal mixer with agitation at the desired speed to control the shearing and tune the size of the gDNA. The speed of the thermal mixer influences fragment length. Higher speeds reduce overall size. For the standard ligation-based nanopore sequencing, agitation at 2000 RPM is recommended. At 300 RPMs, or with no shaking, maximal fragment length in the megabase range can be achieved. These samples will be highly viscous and difficult to process, but will provide the longest possible DNA fragments. During the incubation, it's helpful to prepare and label all the plastics that you will need for part two of the protocol. After the 10 minute incubation, add 75 microliters of precipitation enhancer and mix by inverting eight to 10 times. This solution creates the optimal salt conditions for the DNA to precipitate and bind to the beads. Using clean forceps, add two DNA capture beads to each sample, which at this point should be contained in a Monarch 2ML tube. Add 275 microliters of isopropanol, close the cap, and mix on a vertical rotating mixer at 10 RPM for four minutes to attach the DNA to the beads. If you don't have access to a vertical rotating mixer, you can invert the sample manually 25 to 30 times, slowly and gently. A manual inversion is complete when the tube returns to the upright position, and each inversion should take five or six seconds. If you carry out the inversion slowly enough, no beads will stick to the bottom of the tube. After a few inversions, the solution becomes more viscous and the DNA will wrap loosely around the beads. During the following inversions, precipitation of DNA may be visible, especially with larger sample inputs. The DNA complex will often contain small air bubbles, and with more inversions, the DNA will completely wrap around the beads, often causing them to stick together. Once the DNA is completely wrapped around the beads, the viscosity of the solution will drop back to normal levels. After the inversions are complete, remove and discard the liquid by pipetting, and there are two ways that you can do this. The first option is to keep the tube upright and insert the pipette tip, gently pushing the beads aside to remove the liquid. The second way is to angle the tube so that the beads remain at the bottom and the liquid reaches toward the tube opening. Then pipette the liquid from the surface and continue to tilt the tube as you remove the liquid. Add 500 microliters of gDNA wash buffer, close the cap, and mix by inverting two to three times. Then remove the wash buffer by pipetting using one of the methods just described. Repeat this wash step and once again remove the buffer. This time you can pour the buffer out using the pipette tip to ensure that the beads stay in the tube. Make sure the bead retainer is inserted into a collection tube and pour the beads into the bead retainer. Discard the used 2ML tube. A quick pulse spin removes residual wash buffer efficiently, and there is no drying step necessary. Separate the bead retainer from the collection tube, discard the collection tube, and pour the beads into a new labeled 2ML tube. Insert the used bead retainer into a labeled low bind 1.5 ml microfuge tube. This will be used later for elution. Add 100 microliters of elution buffer onto the glass beads and incubate for five minutes at 56 degrees Celsius in a thermal mixer with agitation at the lowest speed. 
halfway through this incubation, take the sample out of the incubator and tilt the tube almost horizontally and shake it gently. This ensures that the beads can move freely, allowing for complete release of the DNA from the beads. Place the sample back into the thermal mixer and finish the incubation. Make sure that the bead retainer is inserted into the 1.5 ml microfuge tube. After the five minute incubation, pour the eluate and the glass beads into that bead retainer and close the cap. Centrifuge for 30 seconds to separate the eluate from the glass beads. When taking the samples out of the centrifuge, remove and discard the bead retainer with the beads and close the microfuge tube containing your eluate. Before measuring or using your high molecular weight DNA, you'll need to ensure that it's uniformly dispersed. To do this, first pipette up and down five to 10 times with a wide bore pipette tip. Next, you have three options to help the DNA return to its natural conformation in solution. First, you can heat at 37 degrees for 30 minutes to an hour. Alternatively, you can leave at room temperature overnight. The third option is to leave at four degrees for at least 24 hours. Anytime you want to quantify your DNA, it's important to homogenize the sample by pipetting up and down with a wide bore pipette tip in order to get accurate measurements. If your sample is stored at 4 degrees Celsius, spin down the sample before pipetting to collect any droplets that have formed in the tube. We provide more detailed guidance online and in the product manual. If you have any questions or need help with your preps, our technical support scientists are happy to help. Contact us at info at neb.com.